Hi, I'm George from CityGen. Atmospheric haze is what occurs in natural environment filled with air, dust, and other particles. It's an essential element that makes a CG render look like a real thing. There have been two ways to add atmospheric haze in Blender. One is to add it in Blender's built-in compositor after the rendering is done. And the other is to use the principal volume shader recently introduced in Blender. The compositing method is fast, but it's tricky to set up and error-prone since it may not read certain elements in your scenes correctly. On the other hand, the principal volume method is easy to set up, works in real time, and works in most scenario, and it can even add god rays to your scenes. But it's almost impossible to get the original background intact when you need to mix it with some live footage or picture. But most importantly, it takes far, far longer to render compared to the conventional compositing method. So here comes a new approach that I discovered recently, and I would like to share it with the wonderful Blender community that have helped one another selflessly. If I say one phrase, some advanced Blender users would know exactly what I'm talking about. And in a split second, in their mind, they'll probably have already figured out how to use it to add real-time atmospheric haze. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. You just, you're not just familiar with procedural textures. You can just follow this tutorial. That one phrase is sphere gradient. If you don't understand, bear with me. Let's use a simple plane so that we can see the sphere gradient clearly. By default, the closer to the center it becomes brighter, and the more distant from the center it becomes darker. So, what if you flip it and add a color to this extra brightness and add it to the shaders of all objects in your scenes? Voila. This method is relatively easier to set up, gives you unprecedented control over atmospheric depth, works real time, and renders fast.
So you can set them up manually if there are not many objects in your scene. But what if there are tens of, even hundreds of them? It would be unpractical to do it manually. So I made a small add-on to do just that, with many useful functionality such as adding, exporting, and importing presets. If you're interested, you can check the link down in the video description. But you don't have to buy it. You can use the technique revealed in this video to set up the shader node yourself. So I hope you found this tutorial useful, and I hope to see you next time.